I beat from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, the exciting drama of people who walk the great white way, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Afternoon sun strikes glints on Broadway's pavements, and the perfumes of summer drift in from meadows never known, from tropic seas that were never sailed, from green hills veiled in mist and imagined in childhood, drift and die against neon bled of its color. But the illusion still rides the silken vessel of a girl's summer frock, and the season dances in her slow, languid walk, and her passing is reflected in chrome and steel. There's crowd between you and her. And there's loss. So walk away from it, kid, and order the beer and skim off the longing. Summer, too, will finally pass from Broadway. For the policeman, there's this, the corridor to be walked, the corridor at whose end lie the anonymous dead, the unclaimed dead. Walk it and push open a swinging door that opens onto the city's morgue. Stand for a moment against the stillness and move into it. Over here, Danny. This one. What about him? Fill me in, Muggerman. It's a summer's day, Danny, and you and Don't I have to... Don't cry about it, kid. Just tell me, huh? Well, this is the one they brought in yesterday, Danny. One those boys and girls found buried in the sand on Coney Island. When they dug him out, they also found a knife wound in his chest. Made them sad. They turned off the portable radio, stopped dancing. Can you identify him yet? Yeah, that's why I called you. Why aren't you called me? The man was in his beach trunks, no wallet on him, no bundle of clothes, not even a locker tag. You want me to compliment you on how hard you worked for his identity? Yeah, it would be nice. All he had was some numbers tattooed on his arm. Uh, the kind they were, their sequence, I figured they were social security types, so I checked the agency in Baltimore. They had him in their files. He used to work Carney's. Just came in on the teletype. Who is he? A man by the name of Joey Croft now runs a palace of fun down in Coney. Him and a partner. I checked on the partner. They tell me a dish, Danny, a dish by the name of Letty Scott. You going to talk to her? Coney on a nice day. Sure you will. And leave the place of the tagged and cataloged dead. The clean and quiet room where death is pigeonholed. Accounts current for homicide. Leave there and out into beginning twilight. And the drive now to Coney. And Coney Island on a mild summer's evening is carnival. Is pink cotton candy and things that spin and things that whirl. And Coney is ten shots for a quarter. And guess your weight. And down rushing rides and carousel. Giddiness and laughter. Hot dogs, arcades. And little Egypt's oldest granddaughter. Ask a question of a man in a harlequin suit who needed a shave. And be directed to some steps and a frosted glass door to an office at the top of it. Come in. Hi. Hello. Well, thanks. For what? For the stairs. What else do you have on your mind? I'm, uh... From the police. My name's Danny Clover. I asked you something. Yeah, I did. It's about Joey Croft. All right, it's about Joey Croft. Sit down, wait for him. Go ahead, do that. I'm his partner. Mm -hmm. He seems surprised he sees you sitting in his chair when he comes in. Say, Letty said you were to do that. Joey's dead. He was found yesterday on the beach, Miss Scott, dead, stabbed to death. He's in the morgue. Let me alone, will you? All right. Let me alone. Stabbed? That's right. Murdered. What, a fight, an argument with somebody? Joey's temper... How? Who did it? I don't know. What about you? Are you kidding? Did you kill him? I'm a girl who used to ride elephants. That makes me kind to all animals and nearly all people. And I was real kind to Joey. I don't go around killing him. Where were you yesterday? Here, all day. I was here all day, mister. Listen, you, I can prove it. I did 
What am I yelling for? Ask around. I was here all day. Let's assume that, Miss Scott. Let's assume you were here. You didn't kill Joey. Partner, you uh, must have known him pretty well. You just said it. I was his partner. What about it, then? Who didn't like him? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to get somebody in trouble because I knew Joey pretty well, and I'm going to miss Joey. Find yourself a boy named Fred Moore, and I'll tell you where to find him. Who's Fred Moore? He once worked here in a clown suit on his way to being a geek. Stole some dough. Joey screamed. They took off Fred's clown suit and dressed him like they do in Danamora. Fred got three years. Now he's out. You said you knew where to find him. Where? Seagirt. I took a walk down there a week or so ago. Saw Fred sitting on a porch, rocking in a chair. The hotel there. The ocean rest. He waves to me. I wave to him. He got up from his rocker. I walked away fast. Ask him what you asked me. Ask him, did he kill Joey Croft? And tell her you'll do that when you find him. And tell her to stay close to her palace of fun. All hers now. No partners. Because you'll want her to be there if there's need to come back. And leave her. Leave the taunting that lies close on her lips and changes color as neon spins. And on the ride to Seagirt, carnival ebbs. It sounds muted. Its lights flung against the darkening, mist-laden skies and holes. And at the edge of laughter, the hotel, ocean rest. Its paint scarred, blistered, peeling. On its screen porch, a row of frayed and empty rockers swaying to the tides of night wind. And inside, a woman sweeping the sand leavings of the happy vacation time folk. And be told, if you want to know anything, ask of the property owner. The owner, Mr. Zabrowski, a knower of everything. Proper party to ask. Ask in the morning when Mr. Zabrowski comes back from catching night fish. Question her about a guest named Fred Moore. Be told, not here, not no more. Checked out. Be told, Zabrowski. Everything is, is Zabrowski. So issue an all-points bulletin on Fred Moore. Go home. Sleep out night. And in the morning, come back to Ocean Rest. Want me to stay out here, Danny? Yeah, wait. Don't go inside, you. What? Out here is better. You're the police fellow asking around the cleaning woman last night? That's right. You, uh, Mr. Zabrowski? I didn't catch no fish in case you would care to ask. You don't care, huh? I'm looking for Fred Moore. Freddy the geek? Freddy the guzzler? Freddy the ex-con? <laughs> How a man can do such things to his body. Uh, go fight the geek. Your cleaning woman said he checked out. When? Maybe two nights ago. Maybe same two nights ago on day Joey Croft was killed. I read this morning's paper. I say to me, was this same two nights ago Joey Croft was knifed? And Freddy checked out the next night the police fellow. <laughs> Freddy killed a man. You know where he went? I was strong man once, police fellow. Look at me, you could believe it? I asked you if you knew where Fred was. Strong Moore. man broke chains across my chest at carnivals. So it does not matter to me where killers run to hide. I do not care. I go fishing. What makes you so sure he's the killer? He told me. He said to me, Zabrowski, this Joey Croft wronged me. Put me in prison. Wrong me. I fix him. This he said to me on this porch. I do not argue. I do not discuss with private matters of geeks. I give money to geeks for booze. <laughs> I am their friend. When did he say all this to you? First day, come here to Ocean Rest. Say, put me on cuff. Soon I have much money. I laugh how geek can get such money. He told me. He say he fixed Joey Croft. I called Joey, tell him to walk soft because Danny, geek is... What do you want, Muggerman? Just come over the radio. Somebody spotted Fred Moore. A citizen spotted him in West 16th, Danny, in Manhattan. Okay, let's go. You the cops, huh? Who are you? I discovered him, Mac. I'm the kid that found Fred Moore. Where is he? Up there, second floor. He's in the front. Come on, Muggerman. 
I, I was walking down the street out front, made a purchase at the drugstore, including a newspaper, so right next to the box scores is this picture in the paper. This man wanted for question in connection with murder. Then walking back down the block, there he is, going into here. And the shades went down from that room there. Uh, you've been a big help, mister. Now, you just walk down the other end of the hall and wait there. Hey, now, look, I'm the kid that discovered him. Walk. I... Sure, sure. Fred, open up. It's the police. Lights come in front of the door. Try the knob. Drunk. <laughs> yeah, smell this, Danny. Pretty lousy bourbon. What's the matter? He's Fred Moore, isn't he? He's the man we were... Yeah, he's Fred Moore. Not drunk, huh? No. He's dead. Broadway's My Beat. Written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The summer day on Broadway is a slow carousel, and the mob walks in dream time, easy, and stops there to watch the juggler and the pancakes spinning in the window. And there, the spectacular and death-defying act of the jaywalker. And walks again, stops again to drink at the enameled and lighted fountain of eternal orange juice. It's the languid time on Broadway, the easy smile time. And it's clown and a girl blowing kisses. The end of the fabulous ride that costs only a dime. It comes to one corner or another, turns off, ebbs, searches a side street, or goes home. And where I was, the house on West 16th, the seeking was over with, done. Death was here. Slugged in the back of the head, huh, Danny? Oh, uh, maybe. So what's with the maybe? Fred Moore was beat right here where the blood is. You're not going to fight me on that, are you? You heard me. Just maybe, Muggy. Oh, uh, go call the boy who spotted Fred. Yeah. Hey, you. Me? Yeah, come in. You're in here. Here he is, Danny. What's your name? I wasn't wrong, huh? That's Fred Moore, all right? The lieutenant asked you something. What's your name? Ray. I'm Ray Kendall. Hey, what's the matter with him? What's all... Uh... Let me out of Just here. Just take it easy, Mr. Kendall. He hurt bad? He dead? Anybody else walk in or out of this apartment house while you were standing outside? Sure, sure, sure. I guess so. You guess so or you know? I'm no cop. I said, sure, I guess so, because I guess so. Can you describe anybody who went in or out? I don't know who went in that house. I see a wanted guy. I'm supposed to be a deputy or something. I'm supposed to walk up to him and say, hey, Buster, no more of that. You're pinched. Oh, I'm a guy. That's all. I don't do things like that. Me? I'm scared to death half the time, and you expect me to get... Yes? This is the second time I called. Nobody answered the first time. Who is this? I'm Nora Forrest. You're in my apartment. Where will I find you, Miss Forrest? Not far. I'll be in East River Park, one of the park benches on 23rd. Stay where you are. I'll be right there. That's right. It's me you're looking for, mister. So don't look no more. Miss Forrest? Uh-huh. Come on, sit down. Sit. You won't believe the frank discussions I had saving a place for you from other fellas. Fresh kids, too. Thanks. We found Fred Moore dead in your room. That's how I left him. Dead. Right off, I knew he was dead. Tell me about it. Right off, from the beginning. Like to the tune of dear hearts and gentle people. Like that. Any way you want. You know, that's the first time that's been said to me. Anyway, goes back to a vacant lot in Sedalia, Missouri. Even the weeds were burned dry. 
where they set up a carny and I did the hoochie coochie in front of a sideshow tent. But Miss Forrest. You said any way I want. You said that. All right, go on. Thanks. It attracted. Even Freddie, it attracted. Freddie the lush. He stood close up front and he cried. Real tears, mister. Honestly. Memories. You went out with him? Couple times. Girl said to me, Nora, baby, what are you building? What's the percentage in a sure thing geek? <laughs> That's how they talked to you when you were crazy enough to go out with Freddie. They didn't know I'd seen this lush cry. You saw him after that? A couple more times till I couldn't stand it no more. Then... Well, then what? Then the Connie lost them. After a while, they lost me, too. Then I read in Billboard, Freddy's up in Dannemora on a larceny rap. Three years without booze. Say it'd do the kid good. Did you write to him and keep in touch with him? No. But he found you, knew where you were. He found me, all right. Took him a day, took him till Sunday night. That's when he comes beating on my door with a bottle of booze. It's Sunday night, all dressed up, no place to go. Oh, I let Freddie in. How did he die, Nora? My own way. Huh? I let Freddie in. And even though he's drunk, there's something different about the lad. Not like he was there in the world, like he'd done something big. He even came through the haze of purpose. Be nice to me, Nora, he said. Be nice while you got the chance. There's others standing in line, he said. That Dana Mora does things. How did he die? First he danced, real nice. Real deep. Turn, box step. Then he passes out on the couch. Morning he wakes up, goes out to buy more hooch. Comes back in five minutes and turns the radio on real loud and gets fancy. Opens the bottle. Tries to pour some down my mouth and spills it on my shoulders. And I push him away. He falls. His head hits the sink pipe. Right to the beat of the music. Like it was a drum or something. Like... Well, if it was like that, why did you run away? He was dead. So what could I do for him? So take her to city jail. Hold her as material witness. Then leave her. Back to my office, order the coffee and the ham sandwich, and sit there. Think about it. A man found dead Saturday on Coney Beach, identified as Joey Croft, Sunday. And a lead as to his killer, a man named Fred Moore. Fred Moore, an ex-con with a motive for murder. And find him Monday, dead. And think about it some more, and it all gets mixed up with the carnival sounds, roller coasters and hawkers and calliope. Mixed up with a strong man gone to fat and two carnival women. In the middle of all of it, a door opens and Sergeant Tataglia interrupts. Uh, here, Danny. Coffee and a ham sandwich on white. Hmm. I told you no mayonnaise, Gino. Don't knock it. It don't cost extra. Eat, Danny, eat. The way you're holding the sandwich, you're going to drop the lettuce. I told you no lettuce, Gino. Danny, Mama Tataglia had a proverb she used to tell us on meant food. It went like this. Do rabbits get scurvy? No. They nibble lettuce. The way Mama said it, it rhymed. Thank you, Gino. Next time, no lettuce, huh? As is your won't. Now to work, maybe... No mayonnaise, either. You're interrupting, Danny. On the way up from the delicatessen, I stopped at my desk to pick up several items for your perusal. Well, let me have them. Eat, Danny. So eat already. I'll tell you about them. Item one, a memo from Gordon of Technical to Wit. Flecks of blood found on drain pipe near head of deceased Fred Moore. More or less bear out the story of Miss Nora Forrest. Mm. Well, go on. An examination of Miss Forrest by our own Dr. Sinsky revealed several bruises such as might be inflicted in a tussle of the type she described for you. Is uh, there anything there on the record of Fred Moore? Indeed, Danny. Fred Moore, in between jail sentences for petty theft, assault, and the like, Worked around Cooney. His last jail sentence was for three years for larceny and thereby hangs a tail. Oh? Indeed. 
The deceased Fred Moore was a model but lonely convict. In all of his three years there, Danny, no visitors. In spite of the amount of letters he wrote to everybody he ever knew, no visitors. Except Letty Scott. Letty? Uh-huh. She was Joey Croft's partner. Be that as it may, Danny, she visited Fred in the pokey. Twice. The last week he was in prison and the week before. And this is all I have. Thanks, Gino. All in all, you did very well. Uh... Hi again. I recognized your shadow behind the glass door. You two men know each other. I uh, meet him. This morning I speak with him. How are you, Mr. Zabrowski? Good, good. Daddy used to be a strong man in the sideshow. Did he tell you that, Danny? Yeah, yeah, he did. What are you doing here? She, her, <laughs> this one lady, she say come here. I got lonely. I can understand it. Everybody's dying. Everybody does. Take from the bottle, police fellow. Enough here for everybody. Baby, honey. Baby, that's not right. It's yeah. not right at all. I'm giving this party for you. Don't you remember? I told you. <laughs> police fellow, you better go. It's my party. No more. It's my party, Letty. Yours, honey. See? Si. Going to have to wait. <laughs> you know that, don't you, Letty? I heard you've been asking around, talking to people. Cop talk. <laughs> Cop talk, little lady. That's right. <laughs> About murder. Joey Croft. I heard Fred Moore's dead, too. Now you can't ask him about Joe. <laughs> woman, woman, woman. <laughs> you, you go now, huh? With her. How's that? You stay here with me. Anything you say, sugar. Yeah. Let's talk some more about Fred Moore, shall we? As long as Abby can stand you. His death was an accident. Fred was drunk. He tried tried something, wound up on the floor with his head near a pipe. Geek. Geek is geek way to die. What did you think of Fred, Letty? What Zabby said. Why did you visit him at Danamora? My little girl don't visit Geek. Twice, just before he was released. Why, Letty? Business. What business? Oh, don't worry about it, sugar. Just you and I, one minute from now. You got real tired of your partner, Joey Croft, didn't you? Yeah, I got real tired of Joey Croft. It happens to me. Don't you worry about it, Savvy. It takes a long time. man like Fred, no friends, in prison for three years. A girl like you, a beautiful girl, comes to visit him. Something, huh? Second time I was there, the boys in cell block eight beat their cups against the bars. Sure, I went there, Danny. Had a talk with Fred. It impressed him. Made him promises and got him to kill Joey. Zabby, how long can you stand this, sugar? Wait, wait. All right, sugar. I'll tell you the rest, Danny. Fred killed Joey Saturday when he got out. Then Fred came to me and I gave him a bottle of booze for his trouble. When I sent him away, he felt like a man. That's how drunk he was. Then wandered over to see a girl he'd known a long time ago, Nora Forrest. He could face her now. He'd accomplished something. He died. Let's go, Letty. Sit there, honey baby. <laughs> you police fellow, Letty, don't go with you. She do nothing. She bought herself a murder. You do that, Letty? Get him. Break him for me, Zabby. Like he used to do to chains. Yeah. He's spoiling your party, Zabby. Get him. Such thing to do to geek. Get him! You're not pretty anymore. Take her away, police fella. It's the happy time on Broadway. It's after the movies. Nobody wants to go home. It's a place strung against the night like a phosphorescent alley. And they're heaped there. The golden girl, the bright-eyed kid, the man with promises, and the guy who believes in them. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent. 
the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. The program is written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calford as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugabin. In tonight's story, Alvina Temple was heard as Letty, Lou Merrill as Mr. Zabrowski, Paula Victor as Nora Forrest, and Herb Vigran as Ray Kendall.